morning. Welcome. You'll be glad you came to class today because we have a very interesting and kind of fun topic. We're going to talk about graffiti art. So, first, we'll talk about some ideas and issues connected with uh, graffiti. Then look at graffiti artist Keith Haring. His unusual path into the art world and a con controversy that surrounded his work. First, let's talk about what graffiti is. What do I mean by graffiti? The word graffiti comes from the Greek, which means to write. Now, today, when we use the word graffiti, it suggests the work was done illicitly. By illicit, I mean it was done illegally, without permission from the owner of the space. Why do people make graffiti? What's the purpose? Well, usually when someone draws or writes in a public space, a space where people can see it, they're either trying to draw attention to themselves, graffiti can be as simple as someone writing their name, but it can also be an expression of an idea in words or drawing. So, graffiti is a way to communicate ideas and thoughts and even philosophies to the public through pictures or words or a combination of the two. The messages are meant to communicate directly with the public. Now, not all graffiti is art. In fact, some people feel that no graffiti is art. That graffiti is just vandalism. They believe people who make graffiti should be arrested and forced to pay for removing it. Some cities like New York City, for instance, spend millions of dollars each year removing graffiti that appears in public spaces because they think it makes a place look, look well, look like it's not being taken care of. They think graffiti is an eyesore and makes a city look ugly. So, there's a lot of controversy around graffiti. It's only recently, in fact, that graffiti has gained any respect from the art world. The world of museums, formal art exhibits, galleries. Let me give you some background on this. Starting in the 1970s in New York and some other East Coast cities in the U.S., a street art movement began. A lot of graffiti began to appear in public spaces, especially on subway trains and in subway stations. Now, Keith Haring, a young art student, was a big fan of a lot of the graffiti he was seeing around the city. He thought some of the work was the most beautiful he had ever seen. He knew that most of the people creating it were young and not trained as artists. They hadn't formally studied art in school, but he could see that they had a lot of artistic skill. And he especially loved how they used line, fluid lines that connected all parts of the artwork together. So, after leaving art school in the early 1980s, Herring started to create his own graffiti in the subway stations of New York City. He was influenced both by his love of the graffiti he was seeing around the city, and he was also influenced by pop art. The pop art movement of the 1960s, like those artists, People like Andy Warhol, he wanted to break down the boundaries of the art world to make art that was seen and understood by more than just artists and art critics and art professors. He wanted his art to directly engage the public. So, 
Herring started by doing chalk drawings on empty spaces on the walls of subway stations. They were simple line drawings with themes and ideas most people could understand, like birth, death, war, love. He tried to communicate these ideas by using semiotics. Here, I'll write it. Now, semiotics, this is the term for a theory of signs. In semiotics, images act like words. And an artist can use specific images to create a kind of visual language. Herring created images with simple, bold lines. Let me show you. Things like barking dogs. You can see some here. And crawling babies. And flying spaceships. Pyramids. TVs. All these images and symbols you see here. He used these same symbols over and over, but when they were combined with different symbols in new contexts, they had new meanings. So, in these two drawings, the pyramids are basically the same image, but its relationship with the other images creates a new message. Though his work seems basic and simple, it, uh, it really is it's more sophisticated than it appears. It, it shows a strong understanding of visual communication. His drawings are very effective at communicating universal ideas to people of many different backgrounds. Okay, so Herring was making those chalk drawings like these all around New York and all around the subway station. Some days he made as many as 30 drawings. New Yorkers would see his work regularly around the city. And they started to talk about it. Who is, who is this making these drawings? What do they want? And the public attention drew the media. And soon the art world also noticed him interest in his subway graffiti art led to his first gallery art show, which was in 1982. Here's a photo from that show. Wow. Look at that. You can see it looks a lot like the graffiti he made in the subway. He was really the one who first brought graffiti style into the high art world. So, he soon had international attention, and he used his powerful style to make strong social messages. He dealt with issues like drug abuse, and he supported charities with his work. He also got involved in group art projects, especially with children, and community art projects. But not only did he do work for social causes, for public and community causes, he also started to create art for advertising and to take some of his images and put them on t-shirts and hats and posters, you know, things like that. Then, in 1986, he opened a store, the Pop Shop, to sell these things. And this is when he really became controversial. A lot of people didn't like him making money off his art. They said he was selling out. Now, by selling out, I mean they thought he was too commercial, too focused on earning money. And to some people, that meant that his work wasn't even art anymore. They thought he was just designing products to sell. They felt that the desire to earn money was probably affecting his artistic integrity, his honesty as an artist. 
But Herring disagreed. He thought that this was just another way of directly engaging the public, of reaching people with his work. He saw it as very similar to creating chalk drawings in the subway. It was just another way of broadening the boundaries of the art world, making the art world larger, of including more people in the experience. Okay. So, that's enough for today. I want you to think about this idea about whether art can be commercial and still have integrity. And we'll talk about it in discussion groups in the next class. Okay, bye for now.